So the latest, since we're talking about teachers, the latest um, average teacher pay just came out for this year. She's on a different uh, There was a lot of talk about it would be 50000 this year, just mm -hmm. under, less than $200 just under. under. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get your thoughts on that and what you'd like to see happen with teacher pay. Oh, teacher pay is definitely a priority, and that's something that was mentioned uh, in my conversations with teachers. The General Assembly has promised to get teacher pay up to 55000 and I'm sure they will. I hope that no one makes too much of a political issue of this, uh, just missing it by about $150. Um, I would hate for that to be a just a political talking point. Uh, we're moving in the right direction, but teachers want to be in the classroom teaching. Uh, they need to be paid what the free market is demanding, and General Assembly has promised to give to 55000 and I will help the General Assembly do that. You have said that uh, you believe education in North Carolina is outdated. I'm wondering if you can give us one example of something you think needs to be changed. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the support for teachers in the classroom. Right now, we have a system that was designed uh, at the turn of the century, the industrial age. So it's one teacher uh, being told uh, the, the average standards for the average student uh, to stand in front of an average classroom of maybe 30 students and just instruct. But we know now that there's no such thing as average. There is no average teacher. There is no average student. We have to break out of that mindset. And that's why I'm so excited about technology and innovation. And actually my next stop today will be the innovation quarter. And I want to see the technology in use. I want to see how we can personalize education for students and give the tools to teachers they need to do that. Ms. DeVos has gathered a lot of attention in the education field. You support her. Could you tell us why? Uh, yes. Uh, she puts students over a system that has been doing the same thing for a hundred years. If we support students, we naturally must support teachers because all learning occurs in the classroom. The relationship between the teacher and the student is the most important for learning. So if we do what's right for the student, we will do what's right for the teacher. How has the transition been with DPI? We noticed at the meeting yesterday there were a number of people they announced that are, are leaving officials. Your, your thoughts on the transition right now and where we go from here? Uh, I've spent the last month working with the people at DPI, uh, the team that is in place. I will be working with them to bring these new priorities. Uh, and as people retire, I will be working under the previous law now in effect uh, with the Board of Education to replace them with new staff. I also wanted to ask you, you talked about technology. You started your presentation today talking about the reason for this listening tour is to see how Raleigh can help. Yes. You talked about technology. Other areas, you mentioned changes that you foresee that, that will be happening that parents should be looking out for. Other oh, areas. Mm -hmm. ab absolutely. Workforce development. Uh, we will be working on a legislative agenda that we will be rolling out this summer. I've been listening first to learn what those priorities will be, but not just the business community, the parents, the teachers know that just because a student isn't on track for college doesn't mean they're not on track for success. And it is past time that we say every student must be prepared to go to college. We have to say they must be prepared for success. That means they can have the training to go to college or to go get an associate's degree or to go get a job. That's what I'll be looking for, and I'll be looking for local support to make that happen. The governor has said that he does not think there's enough accountability for vouchers. You support the idea of mm -hmm. vouchers of choice. Could you tell me why you think that there is accountability or that vouchers are good for North Carolina? Uh, yes, I mean, there's accountability because parents are choosing to send their school their children there if the school's not getting results parents will take their children out of those schools and those schools will close you said that you're going to be rolling out a legislative agenda this summer is that your legislative agenda yes i will as state superintendent my office will have a legislative agenda and how will that kind of uh go hand in hand or not with the state boards i, I think you'll see a lot of shared priorities uh with the state board obviously we're both two separate entities that care very much about education uh, and you, you'll see a lot of uh, shared priorities. Um, I, I will have more of an emphasis on workforce development. Mr. Johnson, you talked about over-testing during your campaign. Mm -hmm. What sort of plans do you have for addressing that? Well, first we have to see what federal regulations come down. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now we're in transition. 
And when we have those federal regulations, we will relook at our ESSA plan. Now, ESSA or ESSA gives a lot more flexibility to the states for the states to determine what is the best practice for our teachers and students. And I really look forward to diving into that plan, getting feedback from good local district leaders, and making it the best for our students here in North Carolina. One more question. Thanks. Could you tell us why you think that the superintendent and not the Board of Education should be the top educator in this state? Absolutely. I was the one who was on the statewide ballot. People went and voted for the office of the state superintendent. I campaigned across this entire state. I heard from my constituents about testing, about lack of authentic workforce development, about teachers feeling they're in a system that is not supporting them the way they need to be supported. I am out there in the community, and I am ready to bring the changes we need to make public schools better in North Carolina. Do you think that that makes the superintendent more accountable to to the voters of the state? Absolutely. I'm the one on the ballot. Thank you, sir. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you all.